Springs Culture Cast is brought to you by the Smoke Brush Foundation for the Arts, by UCCS Theater Works Production of Doubt, by Newspeak, by a generous grant from the B. Vradenberg Foundation, and by viewers like you. Thanks for your support. Check us out on Pikes Peak Library District Channel 17 every night at 6 o'clock and on KRCC 91.5 FM Monday through Friday at 11.55 a.m. and 8 o'clock p.m. Welcome to the Smoke Brush Gallery. I'm Craig Richardson, your host for Springs Culture Cast, and with me today is Peggy Shivers, the founder and uh, organizer of the Shivers Fund at the Pikes Peak Library District. We're going to be speaking with Peggy about how the fund got together and whatever else she wants to talk about. Welcome, Peggy. Glad to be here. Thanks for asking me. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you. It's, <laughs> it's wonderful to have you. So, the Shivers Fund at the Pikes Peak Library, what Tell us just kind of an overall thumbnail sketch of what it is. Well, the Shivers Fund at the library encompasses a couple of things. First, we started the uh, African American Historical and Cultural Collection, which is a book set and CDs and all kinds of things that you normally find in a library. And then we expanded from that and started a concert series. And with this concert series, we have present the concerts, then we re ask the artists if they would please do a workshop with young people. We just wanted uh, young people to be exposed. Right. Not that they aren't exposed already, but this is another avenue that they can be exposed to classical music, but particularly the African-American young people. We wanted them to see somebody that looked like them doing something other than what they normally see them doing on TV, right. like the, the rap and all of that. Mind you, I'm not against rap, but I just want them to know about other things. Uh, we also give grants, we give scholarships, and we've kind of become kind of a referral uh, agency also. We'll get calls, I'll get calls any number of times asking if I know someone who can do this or who can, in fact, um, I got a call list not a couple of days ago uh, that the symphony wondered if I knew a baritone. And we enjoyed doing this, it, just giving people an opportunity to perform in our community who may not normally perform here. Right. And give our community to see people performing that they might not normally see. And we've been quite successful. Yeah, that's wonderful. So tell us. Where did the idea come from? Why, why did you and Clarence start this thing? Well, now you have enough time. I've, oh. I've got as much time as you, as you do. So. Well, um, in the early 80s, Clarence was blessed and given the commission to do a calendar for Miller Brewing Company. It was a great commission. Oh, it was a great experience, and we can talk about that some other time. But anyhow, uh, he was responsible for the writing as well as the painting of the subjects, and and it was uh, I think the, it was uh, civil rights leaders. So he went over to the library to to do his research and all, and he came back and he was just a little disappointed. Now I don't know if if maybe it was there and he just didn't know how to bring it up or I don't know but he came back saying they just don't have very much about black people over there yeah. and in the back of my mind I said well we're going to do something about that and it took a while but in uh, 1993 we had our 25th wedding anniversary and it just happened to fall over the Thanksgiving holidays and we offered uh, our friends to come for one night if they wanted, which is usually the case. Or since it was Thanksgiving, we could just go over the entire weekend and we'd have different activities. Well, needless to say, everybody opted for the weekend. So anytime our friends are around us, they would expect to hear me sing and to see some of Clarence's artwork. Right. So one of the activities was a concert in the um, evening and art show. We took 
a port this art show and sale. And I was just amazed at how much artwork we sold that Was night. this all Clarence's work? This was all Clarence's work at that time. We only used his work. And we sold enough that we were able to take a substantial amount and donate it to the library. And they were delighted to get it, of course. And we told them that we would like to, for them to spend this on books for and about black people. And that was to be the end of it. Yeah. We hadn't thought beyond that. But our friends, kept writing and calling and said, we had such a good time, let's do that again. So I said, well, we'll do it again, but you're gonna have to pay for it this time because <laughs> we paid for everything for the anniversary. So we start, I started organizing the second one and that was 1995. And I thought, well, you know, this is a good idea. This is something that could go on and continue. So that is how it started. And it has continued from that point on. So now, I mean, it's this, if you could explain a little bit about the weekend itself. I mean, what, okay. what can people see? What, what's happening? What's, what's going on? Oh, well, we try to make it as much fun and enjoyable and educational as possible. We have um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, Thursday is Thanksgiving Day. And on that day, we have... Um, what we call the Thanksgiving Gala. The art show and sale opens at 1 p.m. And this year, because of Clarence's passing uh, and because of a wonderful piece of work that was donated in his memory, we're gonna have the unveiling, we're calling that a memorial to Clarence mm -hmm. at about 1.30. And then at two o'clock, the program begins. And we have wonderful local talent, as well as um, a lady that I'm bringing in from Mississippi. Uh, I just accidentally heard her sing. Uh, she was visiting my sister, and uh, she started singing, and oh, it's such a beautiful voice. So anyhow, we're bringing her in. We will have uh, dancing to a live music, and the band this year is the Miles Street Jazz Band. Have you heard them? I haven't, no, I don't yeah. think so. I think you you would enjoy them. But also one of the highlights on Thursday is that um, Clarence and I both just love to encourage young people and it's, we especially appreciate young people who are doing positive things. You hear so much about the negative things, the ones who are killing and taking drugs and all of that. But we have a lot of young people who are doing fantastic things in this community. Yeah, so one of the things we do is what we call Spotlight on Youth. This year, I don't know how it happened, but uh, somehow or another, the library, somebody at the library changed it from just Spotlight on Youth to the Clarence Shivers Award of Excellence. And it sounded all right to me. So <laughs> <laughs> from, from now on, that's what it's going to be called. But uh, we have about five or six young people that we uh, introduced to the community and tell what they've been doing. We have their picture and their bios in our souvenir journal and we give them a nice little uh, trophy and um, small honorarium just to say we're proud of you. Right. So that takes care of Thursday. Friday night we have our classical concert. Got some wonderful musicians coming in. Um, Louise Toppin She's a soprano that's just sung all over the world. Um, bless her heart, she was nice enough to come for us. You know, we couldn't really afford her, yeah. but she's coming anyhow. Then we have a wonderful soprano from Houston, Texas, um, Paulette Labé Chachon is okay. her name. <laughs> she's a lovely person, and she has been here before, and everybody loved her. So I asked her to come back again. And since I've asked her, she has gotten, um, she's going to be going to Rome. She'll sing here Friday night, and then Saturday morning she has to take off to Rome. Oh, for, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, so the, our people are doing, our young people are doing well. Now that's Thursday and Friday. Yeah. Saturday, that's a busy day. At noon, we're going to have the author's tea. We have some wonderful authors. Uh, Mara Pearl, I think everybody knows her here in the community. Right. Um, Lonzi Simonette, she's one of the local chaplains at, um, oh, at the hospice. And uh, she will be here. 
then the um, I don't know she's kind of special this lady her name is uh, Marie Greenwood it just happens that on the day of the author's tea the 24th of November will be her birthday okay her 95th Oh, wow. Birthday. Wow. She's just a, a fasc- fascinating lady. Her book is called um, Every Child Can Learn. Okay. And I haven't, haven't read it myself. I've just read excerpts. But it's more or less about her experiences as a teacher in the Denver area. Interesting. And uh, working with the children there. And then our last author is uh, Jacqueline Sue. She'll be coming from California. And uh, her book... Well, she has written more than one book, but the one that I've read is Cornbread and Dipsum. Okay. She is an African-American who was married to an Orient Asian man. So it's a, fa- it's a fascinating book, too. That's not, excuse me, but that's not really that common of a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So then that's, so we've got those those two activities. Then at 2 o'clock, we have the workshop for kids, and we'd like for all of the young people to come. Louise Toppin is going to talk about her career as a singer, and then my new cousin, a cousin that I didn't, hadn't met before, uh, is, um, she has a PhD in music and classical uh, flute, but right now her emphasis is on jazz, and the two of them are going to uh, to do the workshop for me. Then that Saturday night is the big night where we have the banquet and the jazz concert. And uh, it's been interesting, interesting to me, some of the responses when that have come in, people that I thought had no interest in jazz yeah. are coming. Yeah. So it's, it, we're excited about that. Then we close out Sunday with um, a service and our special music guest will be the uh, Palace of Peace Seven Day Adventist singers. Okay. They sing a cappella and beautiful. So I'm really looking forward to that. We will have brunch afterwards and then we say our goodbyes and Until next prepare year. for the next couple of years. Yeah. That's, that's an amazing amount, I mean, for, you know, an entire weekend. And it's appropriate, I think, over Thanksgiving to, mm-hmm. you know, really think about these things that are going on in, in the community and, and how you can kind of play a a part and play yeah. a role in, in shaping your community and, and offering something to the next generation. Mm. And well, you know, as I get older, I'm realizing that. Uh, when we first started, I thought nothing of arranging those four days. But now I look, I said, how did I do all of that? <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'd like to talk about uh, as well some of uh, Clarence, Clarence's pieces are uh, kind of behind you hear uh, the Tuskegee yeah. Airmen piece and uh, in Grandma's Arms, is that mm-hmm, what it's called? Mm-hmm. And uh, so Clarence was a uh, it was a sculptor and a, a, a painter and uh, what 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 couldn't he do? Or what? <laughs> That's a, that is one way to put it. But yes, his main emphasis was on uh, oils. He painted portraits. Actually, he painted everything from um, landscapes, uh, abstract, and um, uh, portraits, so uh, the uh, galleries would prefer you to kind of stay in one little area, yeah. but Clarence couldn't do that. And then uh, also he got into sculpting. And this is a um, piece that most people in the community are probably familiar with. This is the bust from the head of the statue that's at the Air Force Academy. And this one, in Grandma's arms, is just a lovely piece with a uh, uh, evidently a grandmother and her baby. Don't ask me where the idea came from. I just just enjoy it. But uh, we'll have a few of his pieces of sculpture on exhibit. But our artists this year are um, uh, Richard Hogue um, does beautiful work. And when I went up to the foundry yesterday to pick these up, there was a piece up there that just blew my mind. It's beautiful. And the artist, the sculptor, works at the foundry. Huh. And I talked with him, and he's going to bring it down, and that will be in the show also. Oh, wonderful. Um, we have a quilter who's coming, uh, Rose Smith from Denver. 
she just loves doing those quilts. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last thing I would be interested in doing, but they're beautiful. Yeah. Uh, then Omo, she has um, handmade African attire that she will be showing. Wow. So that will be our art exhibit for this year. What's that experience been like, kind of providing this, you know, bit of your personality and, and kind of exposing the community to this, be it, you know, somebody checking out a book at the library or going to one of the concerts or... Well, it has been a complete joy for me. And um, I think one of the most beautiful compliments, a lady came up to me and she said, you know, I thought I was going to have to go to Denver to do the research that I needed for this project. But thanks to you, we have we had what I needed right here in the library. And I can appreciate that. I can appreciate the people who come to our concerts and leave happy and are impressed and are delighted that we've done that. I like bringing different areas of the community together. I think when you come to our events, you will see more mixing of various groups and in any other events that we have here in, in Colorado Springs. I love that. And I feel strongly that um, when you live in a community that you're supposed to give back. And this community has been wonderful to me and Clarence. We've, from the very beginning, it's been supportive. And in his passing, it was just unbelievable and overwhelming, the support uh, that we got from the community. And I just, People say um, how nice it is that we're doing this, but I feel that's what we're supposed to do. Right. I really do. Springs Culture Cast is a sponsored project of Fractured Atlas, a nonprofit art service organization. Contributions in behalf of Springs Culture Cast may be made payable to Fractured Atlas and are tax deductible to the extent permitted by law. Please visit springsculturecast.com to find out how you can make a quick and easy donation that will help keep this program on the air. <laughs>